Good morning, September 5th, 2024, Throat Punch Thursday. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, it is. I kind of feel like it too today. Oh, dear. <clears throat> couple on here and <clears throat> I'm going to be done early today guys <clears throat> we have to we are uh, Teresa and I <clears throat> are going into Greenieville today so pray for us we are uh, taking a van load of uh, <clears throat> characters Gary Norris and his daughter and two grandkids are here we're taking Dwight and Amber Smith and their kids and uh, and Josh uh, and Alicia Shelburne and their kids. We're taking them all in the <clears throat> church van and headed up to Rocky Mountain National Park today. I have not been uh, up there since COVID. Uh, now you have to get a reservation to be able to go into the park. Um, who knows, but <clears throat> probably tell us we need to uh, put our underwear on backwards and pull our t-shirt up over our head uh, in order to be safe up there. <laughs> <clears throat> I feel like I'm in a foreign world these days. <clears throat> Definitely a foreign country here. And when you get outside of uh, <clears throat> Morgan County, I just feel like I'm... Uh, uh, an alien anymore, um, but <clears throat> we're going to uh, see the park again, uh, <clears throat> probably find the moose up there eating tofu and uh, the elk now, uh, the it's rut season, the bulls will probably be chasing other bulls instead of uh, chasing the cows, uh, the cows will be trying to grow a beard and antlers. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> it's Throat Punch Thursday. <clears throat> I kind of feel like it too. So, um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> trying to think. Oh, you know, I uh, <clears throat> heard of a young lady that's in our church, that pretty good volleyball player that uh, got cut from the team in uh, Fort Morgan. <clears throat> and. This girl has, uh, last year, played a little bit of varsity, played uh, a lot of JV, sophomore, junior this year, but um, <clears throat> I believe she was targeted. I do. My devotion, my opinion, I can say whatever I want. I believe she was targeted because she is a homeschooler, and they completely cut her from the team, and... Um, you know, the, the small town politics uh, is such a joke. <clears throat> a couple of lessons learned from this too. But as Christians, do not fall in love with the things of the world. The world is not your friend. And a uh, coach claims to be a Christian, maybe so. But I'm telling you, most dangerous people to Christians are carnal Christians. And they... Uh, uh, are not <clears throat> pleasant to be around, <clears throat> but whatever. I feel bad for her getting cut. Uh, not even offered a position on uh, even C team. I mean, she played varsity a little bit, JV last year. This year, not even allowed anywhere on the team. Um, Yep, <clears throat> and the small town politics. This the, the coaches that do do junk like this. Um, you, you really aren't doing anyone any favors, including yourself. And you uh, uh, <clears throat> you teach no character by doing that. You, you bring drama into a uh, teen's life that's already dramatic enough. <clears throat> and uh, shame on you. Shame on parents letting sports become such a god. Uh, it has. Uh, it's ridiculous. And <clears throat> I hate to burst the bubble for... Uh, these parents, if uh, like baseball, look, if your kid is a, by the time he's a junior playing baseball, if he's not hitting 
15 to 20 home runs in a season if he's not hitting uh, 500, uh, if he if he's not throwing the baseball in the low 90s and with uh, really good control, he's not going to go anywhere, okay? He's not going to be the next uh, uh, <clears throat> great baseball player of the day. And football, same way, and track the same way. If your kid isn't, I mean, standing out, against everyone, they're not going somewhere. So give it up. Let the kids play and enjoy it. Coaches, get over yourself. Quit trying to ride on the backs of these kids so that you can get a better paying job somewhere else. Get over yourself and let's uh, let's uh, get back to the basics here and, and uh, pay attention to what <clears throat> really ought to be done. So enough of that harping, but I pray for the day, I do, I pray for the day that our church gets big enough where we have our own uh, rec, rec leagues. I, I do. I, I want to, we already have a little peewee wrestling. I, I want to be able to do uh, basketball, volleyball, baseball, uh, let our kids, we'll form leagues, we'll have games, we'll do tournaments, and we'll teach these kids how to be a how to be a solid believer and a good athlete and use it all to honor and glorify God. And we can pull them away from this indoctrination stations that are ruining our kids and ruining the parents who bow to this and let, and, and just let that run their lives. Uh, it, it's just amazing to me. But anyway, moving on, Proverbs 22, uh, <clears throat> the goal of every parent ought to be these two verses in Proverbs 22, 20 and 21. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? What is it? What's the purpose? What, what, are, what are the these things? That, and shown purpose, I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sinned unto thee. Look, the, the number one goal that we have as parents isn't to make little Johnny the next baseball player, the, the next basketball player, the next, uh, you know, little Antoinette, the, the next greatest volleyball player in the world and all of that. The, the, the thing that we ought to be doing is teaching our kids the counsel and knowledge of God's word and teaching them how to be solid believers and get them through the, get them through the hardest of times in their lives. Volleyball, basketball, baseball, football is not going to do that. When times get challenging and life truly gets rough, it's not going to be sports that bails you out. It's going to be your walk with God that matters. Quit putting stuff in place of who God is. Be careful with that. And don't fall in love with all the trash of the world and think that they're going to pat us on the back and be our friends. They're not going to be. And... I, I just, um, I guess it's, like I said, it's Throat Punch Thursday. I I know I get in trouble. I love our teachers, and they can't take this personally, but I cannot stand the public school system. There I said it. I said it, and probably make people mad, but it, it is everything contrary to what we ought to be teaching our children. And it's shameful, and it's disgusting, and... I'm just tired of people bowing to that and raising their hands to the Almighty, you know, directing their lives totally by the whole schedule of a public school system and basing your entire life and your entire family based on their schedule. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. <laughs> and then I'm reminded, oh, how I should listen to what I read this morning, Ecclesiastes 10, verse 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. I should probably be better at how I say it. <clears throat> but parents, you better pay attention to what's being taught to your children. Not, not just in the classroom, but in life. And what, what is the world trying to conform your child to? And what is God trying to conform your child to? Those two are contrary, and they're going two totally different directions. And oh, how we need to pay attention to that. 
and they handcuff the teachers that, that truly are good, God-fearing, Bible-believing teachers. They handcuff them and threaten them, and, and many will lose their job. I'd just lose my job. I would. I'm sorry. I'd, I'm sure I'd lose my job because I'm just going to lay it out for them and give those kids a chance to hear the truth. And, and uh, they just fire me, I reckon, is what they'll have to do. But trying to remove God out of everything in the government is, is a dismal failure and is a destructive force to, to America. And <clears throat> keep telling these kids the truth, right? And... We can be gracious how we do it. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. The end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool, also, a fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? <clears throat> Boy, we, I know we need to be careful of things we say. And let's um, be careful with our words. And I need to do better at that. I know that. But I think... Sometimes, as, as I don't know, as a servant for God and as one that people listen to, sometimes the shock and awe of, of the reality of what's taken place is a good reminder to all of us. You better pay attention because the lives of your children depend upon it. And your marriage depends upon it. And that this, this world has, has no advice to a godly couple. This world ha has has no right to conform your children into anything. The, our responsibility as believers today is to conform our children into the, into, the, into the image of Christ, and that's through the nurture and admonition of God through his word. And let's keep telling people what God's word says, right? Don't be a fool with your mouth and don't teach them junk that don't matter, right? But then go on, and we're jumping again, but in Ecclesiastes 11.1, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Sometimes take a little bit of a risk, okay? T take a little risk in standing up for what's right. Take a little risk in telling somebody about Jesus. Take a little risk about uh, honoring God. Y you know, even as a, as a public school teacher, take a little risk. Tell somebody about Jesus. Y you ever thought maybe God will protect you in that? Uh, he did Daniel. I mean, Daniel served God and he was second in command. And, and he stayed and stayed true to who he was. And he stayed true through f four dictators, maybe even to the fifth one. I, I don't know. But at least four dictators that were ungodly reprobate unbelievers. And, and he stood strong in his faith and did what's right. And God protected him. I mean, we... We need to, to get a little bit of uh, character in our own selves. And sometimes let's take a little bit of a risk and, um, and quit worrying about offending someone and cast the bread upon the waters. You, you don't know what God's going to do. And, and let's honor him and glorify him in those things and quit being uh, 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 handcuffed and, and quit letting, letting them put tape over our mouths and let's stand up and be right and, and tell others, right? And then verses 12 through 14, I wrote this. I said, get out and do something for God. It says in verse 12, and further, Ecclesiastes 12, 12, and further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh. I'm not saying studying is a bad thing. We ought to, and, and we ought to know what the word of God says, but then get out and do something about it. I mean, what good is it if you know everything about the Bible, but you don't do anything with it, right? And, and you, you just sit behind a, a, sitting behind a desk all, all the time is going to make you weird, okay? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Get out and do something for God, Right? Second Corinthians 8, be generous with your money. That's what he's telling us. Quit being a hoarder. Quit, quit wringing your hands because you're afraid of the economy and everything crashing in front of you and you're going to be broke and you're going to be, you're going to be poor and you're, and you're going to be hungry and you're going to starve to death. And 
Look, I, I guess if that's how God wants you to die, then that's what you'll do. But for the most part, as David said, I have not seen the man of God begging for bread. And so let's get out there. Let's serve God. Let's stand up against the world. And when the world shakes their fist at God, we just keep promoting Jesus even louder. And and uh, if you have to, throw punch Thursday. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> there it is. I'm one minute over. I got to get <clears throat> headed into Greenyville. Pray for me. I don't see some bark eating, smoke leafing, leaf smoking, dope head hugging the trees. I think I'll lose my blooming mind if I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, hey. God bless you guys. Uh, Lord willing, I'm not arrested. I'll be back on here tomorrow. See ya.